It's April 2020 and the COVID-19 pandemic is still affecting all of us. In many countries, public life has stopped and scientists all over the world try to develop sufficient treatments or vaccines. But while the pandemic is advancing, so does the virus. In fact, no living organism evolves as fast as viruses do. In some sense, SARS-CoV-2 seems to develop as quickly as viruses in Plague Inc., a game which is becoming more realistic and popular than ever. And although most steps in the evolution of a virus do not improve the virulence, they might suddenly acquire new pathological features. Just think about it for a minute. SARS-CoV-2 progenitors likely used to infect bats, but then suddenly started to infect humans, thereby causing the worldwide pandemic. So we should take a moment to discuss the evolution of SARS-CoV-2, or let's say 7 to 10 minutes. My name is Kevin Steinig, and today we will see what we know about the development of SARS-CoV-2. By now, we should all know that COVID-19 is a pandemic which was caused by the virus SARS-CoV-2, a coronavirus. And just as a quick reminder, this is the third episode we are doing about the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you're interested in what was going on when it all started, just click on this video here. Maybe you are more fascinated with medicine and think, okay, what are scientists actually doing right now about COVID-19 instead of pipetting small amounts of liquids? If so, then you can click on this video here afterwards where we're discussing treatments which are currently being developed. All right, enough of me showing off my thumbnails. Let's go. Let's talk about the mechanism SARS-CoV-2 most likely uses in order to evolve and then continue by talking about its development in the past months. Just like all forms of living organisms, viruses evolve and we can prominently see that when we look at flu season. Each year between 5 and 15% of all people become infected with the influenza virus. Once a person recovers, however, its immune system is able to recognize the same pathogen and should be able to fight off the influenza virus if it ever enters the body again. As you all know, however, we all suffer from flu more than once in our lives. In fact, a person is infected with the influenza virus and becomes sick every 4 years on average. This is because the virus rapidly evolves and after a while our immune system is not able to recognize it anymore and we become sick again. So viruses evolve. How does that precisely work? Well, there are different mechanisms. Coronaviruses, however, seem to mainly use mutation and recombination. So let's first talk about mutations. A mutation is a permanent change in the genetic information of the virus, which mostly happens by chance. In a previous video, we have already discussed that SARS-CoV-2 makes many copies of its genome inside of the host cell. And now you have to think it this way. Each time the virus makes a copy of its genome, there is a slight possibility that the wrong nucleotides are being incorporated. Nucleotides, of course, are the building blocks of replication. And the more copies the virus makes, the more mutations can accumulate. Moreover, the virus has a very rapid life cycle and make hundreds of viral particles in each host cell. And in that way, even more mutations occur over time. Mutations are often detrimental for as complex organisms as humans, and therefore we have a lot of different mechanisms which afterwards can repair these wrong incorporated nucleotides. Many viruses, including SARS-CoV-2, do not have any repair mechanisms whatsoever. Therefore, the mutations do not only occur frequently, but they also stay inside their genome. It is estimated that most RNA viruses have a chance of generating 10 over minus 4 to 10 over minus 6 errors per nucleotide. This would mean that each time SARS-CoV-2 replicates, 0.03 to 30 mutations would occur. However, it is estimated that SARS-CoV-2 has a lower mutation rate than the sars coronavirus, which already has one of the lowest mutation rates known to RNA viruses. In fact, only a handful of new mutations have been identified so far in patient samples all across the world. And this could be great news. Because this would mean that we do not have to constantly develop new vaccines against SARS-CoV-2, but only one vaccine would be sufficient in order to eradicate this virus from this world. But if SARS-CoV-2 has such a low mutation rate, how was it suddenly able to infect humans? Well, hints in its genome suggest that it underwent recombination. Recombination is another mechanism through which viruses can evolve, and it's also often called virus sex. And yes, even viruses have active sex lives. Well, at least to some degree. Compared to the constant acquisition of new mutations, recombination provides a much more drastic way to evolve. 
As we've already covered in the last episode, SARS-CoV-2 compared to other coronaviruses uses an RNA polymerase in order to copy its genome. This RNA polymerase has a quite interesting characteristic. It can dissociate from one RNA molecule and associate with another RNA molecule while making copies of the genome. Of course, this mechanism is not very spectacular if only one virus is present in the host cell. However, if another virus infects the same host cell at the same time, the RNA polymerase can start to make copies which have genetic information of both viruses. In this manner, we mostly get new, incomplete viruses. Sometimes, however, the RNA polymerase has such a perfect timing that a completely new virus evolves. Now we have a virus which shares features with both parental viruses and has been shown that coronaviruses are able to undergo recombination. The SARS outbreak in 2002, for example, was caused by a coronavirus which originated from the recombination of two SARS-related coronaviruses. Interestingly, recombination seems to take mostly place in the region which produces the spike protein, which is very important for binding to the host cell. In this manner, coronaviruses have a higher chance to infect new species. Current evidence suggests that also SARS-CoV-2 originated from the recombination, but this time from a bat and a pangolin coronavirus. We know that since the RNA of SARS-CoV-2 is nearly identical to most genomic regions of a bat coronavirus, while the spike protein encoding region is very similar to a pangolin coronavirus. So that is one explanation how SARS-CoV-2 originated. However, there is another claim that it might have escaped from a laboratory in Wuhan. Well, could this be true? Before I answer this question, I want to emphasize that I am not interested in politics, only in scientific explanations. I try to be unbiased about this, just knowing the general techniques in molecular biology we conduct in a laboratory. And well, it is most likely false. There was an initial claim that the sequence of SARS-CoV-2 is very similar to an artificially constructed DNA vector. However, it has been proven that this is wrong. And as already mentioned, we now know that all notable features of SARS-CoV-2 are found in nature. So there is no evidence that some scientists manipulated SARS-CoV-2. So make sure to like this video and share it with all of your friends if you believe that viruses can evolve naturally without having any scientists spilling over their stuff. Okay, but how is SARS-CoV-2 currently developing? A recent publication suggests that we have three different subtypes of SARS-CoV-2, A, B, and C, and they are different in only a handful of positions in a gene. What is quite cool about the study is that the scientists also tracked the movement of the virus. For example, a man from Mexico said that he had been to Italy prior to becoming sick. And not only does his virus confirm that, but also that his virus originated from a virus found in Germany earlier. In fact, here we are talking about the first documented case in Germany, and here the patient has actually been to China where he got infected prior. So in this manner, the scientists also try to reconstruct how the virus travels. So yeah, lastly, one of you asked me to review a publication which was just released last week. So it's time, scientific report review. Since coronaviruses can be generally found in many different animals, scientists wanted to know if SARS-CoV-2 is able to infect domesticated animals. So they inoculated animals with SARS-CoV-2 and measured the numbers of viral particles over time in different parts of the body. In some cases, they also kept in close proximity to uninfected animals in order to see if the virus can also spread. So here it was found that the virus replicates in the upper respiratory tract of ferrets, but does not cause any severe symptoms. On the other hand, the virus is not efficient in infecting dogs or any livestock. In cats, however, the virus might be able to replicate and transmit between different animals. SARS-CoV-2 cats have also been described in Wuhan, so let's see what follow-up studies say about this topic. And for now, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, let me know in the comment section, your opinion is always interesting to me. And share this video with all of your best favorite quarantine buddies in the world. And subscribe if you're new here. Uh, hit the bell button. And with that, I'll see ya. Just something quick for the end of this video. If you're interested in awesome scientific discussions, I just made a Discord server, L3's World of Science. Feel free to join me there. See ya.